This is such an interesting question. Thanks, Stephen, for posing it. And I've just had some fun having a look at some research online. So everything that I say, I'm going to leave a reference at the end of this post um, somewhere in the notes for you to have a look at if you want to check it out. One thing that I've just found out that was really, really interesting is about fluoride. So lots of people have talked about um, how fluoride is really bad for you. Um, it, the, the studies that um, were used actually to support the idea that government would fluoridate water were conducted before 1975 and have now recently in the last 10 years been acknowledged as being flawed, which is happening in the medical community anyway, with lots of government policy. We're finding that a lot of um, public um, advice Advice is actually based on quite flawed data um, and that is really coming to light recently a lot so um, so with fluoridating water what's actually the, the original pr uh, principle was that fluoride um, would sit in tiny little pores in bones and teeth so your teeth are porous fluoride it, what's supposed to happen is they're supposed to get mineralized with um, little bits of, of magnesium or calcium that come in from the food you eat so the green leafy vegetables and other kinds of foods that you eat are supposed to give your body the natural minerals that would normally be used to um, create healthy teeth and so what happens when you have fluoride fluoride also sits in that space and it's not the correct molecule for your teeth and so Yes, it might in the short term um, sit there and make your teeth a bit harder, but that's at the expense of health, essentially. And so then we consume the fluoridated water, the same thing's happening to bones. And what's actually been found since 2016 is countries that lower or stop fluoridating water have less cavities in the population. And so that's something to bear in mind. I have the evidence and I'll, I'll add that to the end of the call. So that's one thing. If fluoride's still being added to your tap water, you don't want it to be added to your tap water. Another thing is chlorine, which is um, some countries chlorinate their water, others don't. If you leave your water standing on the side for overnight, the chlorine should evaporate. You shouldn't really be drinking chlorinated water. I've talked already on another post about how chlorine is the same shape as iodine, boron, uh, sorry, bromide, not boron, um, and, uh, and all of the other things in the halogen um, column of the periodic table. Um, so they mimic uh, fluorine, chlorine, uh, bromine, um, and I've forgotten the A, uh, the AT one. They all sit in the same uh, column on the periodic table. They're the same shape and they um, sit in the thyroid. So they will block the uptake of, of iodine at the thyroid, which will lead to issues with the thyroid, which you don't want because that's involved in all of your hormonal processes in the body. That's part of your um, how you regulate your metabolism in the body. So that should be kept healthy. And that's obviously a problem when you go swimming. And that's not even to mention, and now I'm going to have to check what the name of this is, but plastics. And one of them is P. I, I, ne I need to get one of those things that tells me what the... Uh, this is from the Guardian, actually. Um, PFOA, perfluorooctanoic acid. So basically, we do know that there are plastics in um, in and chemicals in tap water, and um, these plastics and these chemicals uh, uh, they're called forever chemicals. It's nigh on impossible to get them out, and so in tap water there are allowed limits. Now, we just don't know enough about, we're, we're learning all the time about what these chemicals are doing to us. Um, you know, for a, a while ago, there was a study that showed that levels of manganese in tap drinking water was linked to lower cognitive ability in that population, in children, school-aged children in that area. Is that a risk you want to take? I don't. So I filter my tap water. I have a Berkey, um, which I'll leave a link for. I have no affiliations with them. So this P F A P F O A. Um, this is actually used in um def different kinds of um clothing and food pa packaging as well as firefighting foams and it's probably used. In fact, I think it is. It's used as a fire retardant and that's going to be in your carpets, your curtains. Um, it's probably on your furniture, but it's also being found in your tap water and you don't want to be drinking it. It's, an, it's just been reclassified as a class one carcinogen. This is the latest news. This is from in the last couple of years and um, there is at present no way of getting that out of the water supply. So if you want to make sure that the water you drink is 
pure, you need to filter it. At the very, very least, get a Brita filter, at the very least. If you have a great big budget, get a, a massive undercounter filtration system with carbon and UV to kill any parasites or to kill any bacteria. There's so much I could talk about on this subject, but the upshot is if you can get just an over-the-counter water filter, a Berkey, then you'll do yourself a massive justice. And it might only be at the moment, what we say is a small amount. But the thing is that every single little thing that you do that's easy, that you can do that benefits your health, just takes another thing out of the equation. And this is one of those little hacks that it it's a one-time outlay. It's very inexpensive. A couple of hundred quid will get you a lifetime over-the-top uh, countertop water filter. Um, I haven't even gone into estrogens and the amounts of... Um, uh, uh, resi residues of people's medications that are in water and the contraceptive pill that women take and they pee out the metabolites that goes into the water and not all of it is filtered out. There's loads of research on this. I hope you found that useful.